Zero Shell meets Google Fiber. Welcome back to Pushing Technology to Limit. Today is going to be a more advanced video uh, for those that have fiber optics. And I have started this video for a reason because my friend asked me about uh, fiber optics and Zero Shell. He has uh, Google Fiber. Now I'm not sure if Google Fiber is just in the US or if it's in the European countries as well. So this video may not be applicable to you folks in European areas. And like I said, I'm not sure because I'm, I'm not over there, but um, Google Fiber is not available in all states uh, in the US, but there are some places that do have it. So. I'm going to be talking about a little more things that are advanced, and if you are a beginner, um, this video is probably not for you. Um, as we speak, uh, our routers are being slowly outdated. And what I mean by that is these new high speeds that we've got do not use the traditional PPOE anymore. Now, a bunch of this information that I've I'm going to be sharing with you today is based on what my friend has told me. And I do not, like I said, I do not have fiber optics or Google uh, fiber optic, but I did simulate what my friend was talking about in the basement with my current router. What fiber optics is basically doing is that they're just using a router and controlling basically your entire network now I'm going to be showing you what I did to solve that problem and I hope that my friend uh, will be able to use this information and get it to work this video might be a little bit longer than than some because I'm going to be going through basic setup with uh, Google Fiber and like I said, it's a simulation, so you're going to pretend that this is your Google Fiber uh, Internet setup. Uh, so parts that you need is a smart switch or a managed switch. Uh, you could probably look up smart switches quicker than you could do managed, but uh, that's managed switch is basically the, the technology term that they use, and smart switch is basically the selling point. So, let me show you what I got in the basement, then we're going to go to my screen and help you get things set up. Does this look familiar to you? We're back into the master control room. I'm going to be showing you all the parts that you need to do to make Zero Shell work with your Google Fiber. Uh, you need basically a managed switch, like I said, and get a small one. You're probably about running about eighty, ninety dollars. They might have come down by now. I don't know. I've been buying the big switches, but for this little project, all you need is a small one. Now this is not a permanent setup. This is just a test area. This is my small eight-port Netgear switch, and I have these two cables, which one comes from my main router and the other one goes to my zero shell, and this one's for management. And up here, we have uh, my Netgear small business router, and this holds VLANs. And this is what is going to be supplying the Zero Shell uh, internet. And basically, what you do with Google Fiber is that you're going to tag these ports, you're gonna, because this router is untagged. And then over here, my Zero Shell or this zero shell, both of them are running zero shells, uh, are untagged. So you need to have a box basically to transmit the tagged information. So that this switch right here is the key to make zero shell to work. Whether this is your uh, fiber optic modem router, uh, basically they're routers now, they're not modems from what my friend has said. So this uh, is going to simulate if it was a fiber optic connection. Now you're not going to get one gigabyte off this thing. 
we're just getting DSL because I'm still using the PPE, uh, PPOE over here. Now, don't really ask me what that all means, the PPOE, but that's basically what uh, all of us are using that are on copper services. So now, we'll get to my screen and see what happens. First off, let's go over to switching. And we will um, go over to um, VLANs. Right here are, are our ports. So my router is on 2 and 3. So this is where the internet's coming in. And this is where the internet's going out. So what you want to do is go to VLAN and make your VLANs. And for my purpose, for my test purposes, I made four different fake modems. And they're all set and ready to go. But I'm just going to show you, so if you've never done this before, uh, and if you're wondering what a VLAN is, and uh, for those that know what it is, this is going to be a repeat for you, but I can't help it. Um, VLAN is Virtual Local Area Network. This means that this is one network, this is two, this is three, and this is four. So when I got these VLANs, these are four different networks. So these would be like four different routers. If you were to plug four in individual routers into your your switch. So now we go over to advanced and then click um, VLAN membership. And the first one's going to come up as the default. And how I got mine set up is that I've got everything else, the ports that I'm not using, well, except for the management one and this one, which is the, the computer and the Netgear router, both have untagged. But for the Zero Shell, I don't want to have any communication with VLAN 1. So I go all the way down to 100. Whoops, I got the wrong one. I got 101. I wanted 100. So let's uh, look at that. So what I've done here is I've tagged both port 2 and 3. And everything else is just left blank. So in my router is my modems. So basically this would be like your fiber optic router. You would have a VLAN somewhere. Uh, you can use DHCP too. Um, I'm not sure, and I'm just being, again, I'm, I'm not sure about fiber optic modems or routers because they're, what my friend said, they're basically just a router with your uh, internet connected to it. So basically, I have DHCP enabled on this, don't really need it, but it's there. And what I do is... Let's see, let me get an okay, so that's that one. So let me go into my zero shell and get going on that. Now see, there is no, absolutely no internet here. And let me pull up another document here. Go into networks and on, I've got some bridge stuff going on here. I've got it kind of half and half because I'm doing some testing. Um, so basically when you are in yours you will not see this bridge zero zero you'll just have your ethernet uh, depends on how many ethernet cards you've got uh, will show up and like this one has no internet or even just no connection no whatsoever so ethernet 2 is the one I want so what I do is I create a VLAN and I'll title it and I do got some titles already here um, from previous sessions so I'm just going to do modem 1 and that is 100 so now you got your VLAN set now you add IP whoops let's see I clicked the wrong button again add IP now I'm going to put my address in just make it 23 
So now we got those uh, working. And then we go over to router. And we add another route. Now if you do, now like I said, if I can't help you as far as knowing what your router is going to be capable of doing, whether you've got Google or Verizon or what have you, but if you just do it the way that I'm doing it, it will work. I mean, like I said, everybody else will have to figure it out for themselves what they're doing. But for the main setup, it's going to be the way it's going to work. So I want this, everything here, be pretty much close to what the router is going to be except it's zero. Then I want to point my gateway to this router. And I've got it right here. And I want to put one. And each time you keep adding another router you need to go two, three, four, five, six. So that's in. And if we go back to setup you'll see there's still no internet so you gotta go over to net balancer and mine's on and I need to add my modem so you can title it so it's modem one now the weight from what I've read is the speed of your connection I don't know I haven't really verified if that really makes a difference or not I don't know anyhow I'm going to paste in because I've got everything I copied it from my other screen and now you put that in and click save so now it says active now you go back over here the setup well we still don't have internet just yet so let's check out some other things and just ah yes that's right I forgot to enable the net whoops let's see here I was trying to slide it and then I was actually shrinking it so what I need to do is enable the net on 0 to 100 now let's see not for some reason that still it was working okay so checking my uh, configuration out I just found out why uh, I am not getting the connection so I did not select where I was gonna put this so I need to remove the IP and then check mark this so it's you you put a little green uh, dot in here and buy a VLAN 100 then click your add IP and then hit paste and then hit OK now we'll check the uh, green see if it's yep see now we have internet so basically, I made a mistake here on my network card. I should have had this right in the VLAN. Anything that's outside the VLAN would not be accessible. So now it's accessible. And my uh, alert status just went away. So we know we've got internet. Now to check to make sure that we do have internet, we're going to go to my test computer and we're gonna do a weather or just do a search I'm not sure on weather or what but I'll just uh, I'll just do a search to make sure that it comes on so I just did a search on what is my IP address so I could find out what my public IP is and now I can actually do a speed test and check my internet speed well we'll just it hasn't finished loading so I'll just check it anyways and see what it does I mean I know we have uh, good internet on the main part of our network 
Well, it, for some reason it doesn't want to do it. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, we'll retry it and see what happens. Now, but I do have internet because I can go to anywhere on the internet. Like, uh, do a search for Facebook. And I can log in. And there we go. So, this is working. Now, there are some extra things that probably need to configure in this router over here to make the internet faster. Um, I'm just going to remove that bridge just to keep things uh, from having any hiccups. And but other than, other than that, uh, the internet is working fine. I mean, a little bit slow, but there's a little bit of tweaking that you need to do in this. And if you come over to Net Balancer, uh, you can click on Rules, and then so this is just a side note. Uh, you don't need to do this if you don't want to, but you can actually make rules on what you want done with your connections. Now if you have more than one connection, so like I've got uh, modem one, but if I put all four in, I could designate different areas where the network could go to. And then I just tell it, you know, you want your, say like um, VLAN 90, and then you put your computer IP address in there and then you just hit save and you're all set now you wanna I'm still gotta mess with this uh, there's different ways of setting it up but it works as is if you put your computer address in and, it, and I've, I've done the test there and it works just fine so after making some adjustments to my router I found that there is some uh, things I had on that I didn't need on and come to find out that my other router which is this one I had this QoS uh, too low so that uh, impacted my speed test here so if we do a speed test now we should get no errors we'll see All right, so we're getting around about 13, uh, almost 14 megabits down, which is not bad. I don't know why the ping, I guess because the server is really far away from us, but for what I need it for, uh, it's good enough. Uh, the one website I uh, was looking at, actually I was using for a good long time, which was speedtest.net, they got so much junk on their website with ads and things you cannot get an accurate speed reading so this century link uh, works perfectly fine I mean yes it's it's not even in my state but it's giving me an accurate picture of what I'm getting I'm getting about well I'm not sure why it's uh, 15 I mean roughly the, the speed test that I've been doing has been around about 18 19 megs down and about one to two up so one is okay but I also think it's due to because of the uh, you know we're running a virtual system here versus a physical computer so that's basically how you get your internet running um, like over here on my router one thing I did have running was the QoS and I had some test things here that you see and I shut everything off so the other thing I did get rid of was my um, my bridge so this is what you should see when you first log into your your router well actually not first but when you click on your network tab over here anyhow that's how you get your fiber optic internet working I mean you can use anything you want you can use a, a VLAN router uh, that has a DSL connection like I am and I've got 
this modem here. Now, if I add more modems, I can make different areas that I can, you know, send off, you know, information to. So, like when I go over to my net balancer and I set my balancing rules, I can say, you know, network one here, network two there, and then it just goes. Now, as far as QoS is concerned, I'm not sure how that works. If anybody knows how that works, I mean, I've gotten it to work somewhat, but I cannot do VLANs, which is pretty pathetic. But anyways, it's working as is, and I hope my friend is able to get this thing working, like, you know, the reason why I was doing this video. But, uh, we'll, we'll have to see. Well, you folks should not have a problem with setting this up. I had some small problems because... For one, I've been doing a lot of testing with the Zero Shell router. And the other is is that I've just had certain things that were not set up right. And I've I had to reset my computer, at least my test computer anyways, just to be sure that there was no bugs in it for some reason. Because there's absolutely no virus software in it. And the reason why there's no virus software is because... I use it for, you know, testing, then I crash it. <laughs> you know, I have a restore point to send it back to the spot that it was brand new. So I'm not all too concerned about virus and all that. So you should get your router running perfectly fine without any issues. Uh, depends on how your fiber optic router is set up and zero shell, but... I don't see really too many problems. It's just my setup was a little more finicky because of all the things I've got going on. And this was just basically a test to show you that it does work. It wasn't really the perfect uh, example that I could have thought of, but hey, it was better than nothing. So I hope this helps you get your Google Fiber going or whatever high-speed internet you may have. Um, and, and it's not even just... The internet, I mean, you could do a whole lot of cool things with this thing that, that you cannot do with normal circuit board routers. I mean, I can make my network dance and, and do flips compared to a circuit board router. So, I hope you get something from this video, and I'll be seeing you later, and have a great day.